Hello, welcome to Northwoods Renaissance. Before you, we have the Mossberg 930 SPX. And long ago, I said that I'd do a video on how to field strip, clean, and reassemble this thing. And today is the day, after a lot of stalling. But that's how gun maintenance is, I guess. Disassembly and cleaning are not going to be too bad, but uh, reassembly's got some special challenges to it. But as long as we do things in the right order, it should go fairly smoothly, except for the uh, spring in the magazine tube. That's going to... That's going to be an adventure, and we might have to make up some new curse words. We'll see if our uh, existing vocabulary is up to the task. As always, the first rule of gun cleaning is to make sure the firearm is unloaded. For demonstrational purposes, I've got a load of snap caps in this thing. You can see there's no primer there, but we'll uh, conduct ourselves safely as if. And uh, we don't want to make it into the headlines here. You guys ever think that now that everybody's got a camera, there's a lot less headlines that say gun accidentally discharged when cleaning, and instead it was, he was playing with the gun and it went off. Yeah, think about that one. All right, so to check if this thing's loaded, we'll cock it. And I did see a round pop up in there. And for this part, you're gonna wish you had a second hand. So we'll push up the elevator and then hit the bolt release and all the shells should come shooting out. And then you got to jack out the last one. Let's get our area set up. We'll look at another way to safely unload the firearm so that you don't have to chamber around. And then we'll uh, charge in whether we know what we're doing or not. Got our workspace here. Before things get too involved, why don't we clear out all the stuff that we don't need so that we've got a nice tidy area to work with. Ooh, that's a natural 20. That's critical. Make sure you get all the ammo out of the area. If the gun goes off and you don't manage to shoot yourself, by the time your wife gets done with you, you'll wish you would have. So far we have a flashlight that I got in my Christmas stocking, a punch kit, a bench block, and I said we'd show another way to unload this thing where you don't have to rack around into it. You can push the elevator up and just hit the bolt release and everything will come popping out, but that's going to take a fingernail off. So rather than uh, sacrifice my finger, I'm just going to put this uh, knockoff sharpie in there and push the elevator up and press the bolt release. And you might have to work it a little bit. There we go. Let's get that out of there. Having safety check things one last time. You can see the follower in there. Good to go. Let's start the takedown process. We got the bench block. Got the punch kit. I didn't have a plastic punch of the right size, so we'll just use a brass one. So these pins will go out in either direction, but you're going to want to have the starboard side facing out because when we remove the trigger assembly, if you have it facing the other way, some pins can fall out of there, and we don't want to have to deal with that. So we'll just start by knocking these things out through the bench block. set that aside for now get the bench block out of there and so I don't lose the pins these are multi-directional it doesn't matter which way you put them back in I will put them in with the punch kit after we drive those two pins out you can just pull the trigger assembly straight out and we'll set it aside in order to get at the barrel in the gas system you got to take the magazine tube off this was a little tight when I first got at it I think I put a strap wrench on there and cranked it off and now it cinches up nicely hand tight and I haven't had any problem with it loosening on its own. So this thing's under spring tension so I've got my uh, high performance gaming and firearms cat standing by to go chase it in case things get out of hand and it goes into the closet but I'm gonna try and keep a good grip on it. Well, that went about as well as I expected. And this thing has a tendency to get a little tangled when you take it off, but you know, your years of slinky experience are finally going to pay for themselves right here. So we're going to start pulling this thing apart now. My recommendation is just keep everything in the order that you removed it in, and you shouldn't have any problems. So we'll start by removing the handguard. Next we can pull the barrel out of the receiver. Get 
the spacer here. Multi-directional. A pusher. A return spring. Another spacer. So let's zoom in here a little bit. This is going to be one of your key cleaning areas where you're going to have some carbon buildup. That's where the uh, piston rides back and forth over the magazine tube. To get the bolt out of there, you can just pull the charging handle straight out. It's held in with a detent. Ooh, yeah. And that is uh, single directional, so you're going to want to make sure your notch is going backwards when you put it back in. So the charging handle is what was holding the bolt in. You can hit the bolt release and just slide the whole assembly forward. And the top just comes right off of there. And this is another piece you got to watch for. This uh, rat tail is held in place just with this pin, but that's ready to slide out if you hold it sideways. Yeah, Things are looking pretty good. I only shot about 10 slugs through this thing since the last time I cleaned it. And I don't know if you've figured it out by now, but it's such a pain in the butt that I don't like to break it down very often. Although they do recommend every four to five hundred rounds. So before I lose that pin, I'm going to get that back in there. And you can certainly check out your trigger assembly and see if there's any gunk in there, but it's pretty much a solid piece. There's hardly any debris in there at all. So that brings us to the gas system that we were going to talk about. This thing operates like an AK. It's got a piston in this housing. The piston goes around the magazine tube. It's pretty clever. You can see a little bit of carbon build up here. Nothing too serious. We'll throw some oil on that before we throw it back together. And we'll give the piston a little more TLC. This piston is going to be the filthiest piece of the shotgun. And it's got two O-rings, an internal and an external get the o-rings off you're going to jam your screwdriver in there at the seam give it a little twist and then kind of work it around and off there we go then you got your two o-rings you'll be able to get these apart the same way so you pop your screwdriver in there and you just work them apart and it's it's easier if you're not in front of a camera if you can you can get an extra set of hands to help you that's good and then you can always hold the seam apart with the one screwdriver and then pry it off with the other with the second and inside these o-rings is going to be your major filth accumulation areas so you're going to want to get those uh, nice and tidy there seems to be two schools of thought on pistons. There's everyone's and then mine. And everyone says, well, don't put any lube on there because that's going to gunk everything up and then you're going to have mud on your hands and it's going to suck. And uh, then there's my school of thought, which says put a light coat of lube on there, just oil, and that's going to give you a protective barrier so that when things do cake up on there, if you regularly pull stuff apart, you'll just be able to peel it off and it's not going to be crust it onto a dry surface it's gonna be able to be more easily scraped off and I don't know if I'm right but I haven't had any problems yet I don't know how that treats firearms long term and again when you throw this back on you can see there's a beveled end and a flat end you want to put the flat end down otherwise it's not going to come together you can just push the beveled end right up through the bottom on here and just with your fingers it should go together nicely you want to make sure that the seams are opposite each other. And then this is going to be a little tricky like before. <clears throat> like I said, this is going to go on there super easy and uh, you're not going to have any problems. And when you got the piston out, you're going to want to go after this area pretty aggressively too. You're going to get some pretty serious carbon buildup in there. And I'm sure you guys all know how to clean a barrel and chamber. This thing likes to rust a little bit if I don't keep a light coat on it. So that's something to keep an eye on. And the piston just slides back in there nice and smooth now that it's uh, cleaned up. And should be able to move freely back and forth in there. So for me, anywhere we got uh, moving parts contacting each other, I'll throw some lube on there. And I believe we're ready to reassemble this bad boy. Reverse the process. Don't let your pin fall out on your rat tail. 
set the top right on there. That brings us to the first trick of getting this thing back together. So as we put the bolt back in, it's going to go in there and that rat tail needs to go right in that tube and there's a like a plunger spring assembly in there and that's going to function like your AR-15 recoil spring. And the best way to do that is with the trigger pack removed and with the shotgun held up and down. So let's change camera angles and I'll show you how it's done. So because we took the trigger pack off we can just drop the thing right in here. And uh, you're going to have access through the bottom to guide that rat tail into place. And then you're going to have to hit the magazine release to get it to fall. And there we go. Got it in two. So now we just take the charging handle and throw it back in there where we found it earlier. And that will keep the bolt from getting away from us. Next up, let's get the trigger back in there. Just line up the holes. And now I can start throwing the gas system pieces back on here. Got the spacer with the uh, lip end going inward. Turn spring. Pusher. And that pusher is going to want to try and reorient itself, but you can see the curvature of the barrel fits in there. And it's pushing back on the rails on the bolt to cock the gun. We've got our spacer here. I'm going to put a good coat of lube on this thing underneath where the hand guard is going to cover because it's probably going to be in storage for a while. Barrel going into your chamber. That's fed in there. Your piston's going over your magazine tube and give it a little oomph. Work the charging handle and it looks like we're good to go. Next up, we'll throw the hand guard on there and uh, if we maintain a constant pressure on that. That's going to hold everything together until we can get our magazine spring and our magazine extension on there. So I forgot to mention earlier that you can just turn this thing upside down, the magazine follower will fall out. So let's get that thing in there. There we go. And now the moment of truth, the magazine spring and the magazine extension. So we're good about to hear. probably a little difficult to see is that I'm maintaining tension on the handguard because that thing wants to come springing out at me and I'm going hand over hand to get the spring in there and once I feel like I've got it to about the right length I'm gonna put the extension on there and then hold it as straight as I can and jam it on there and get the thread started And uh, that went fairly easy. Okay, everything's back together. This is the part where we see if we're as smart as we think we are. Step one, is the follower oriented correctly and springy? It sure is. We'll charge it. Does the bolt hold open work on an empty chamber, an empty magazine? Sure does. Now, we'll load it up and make sure that we can get seven plus one in this thing, uh, two and three quarter shells. So in the past when I put this magazine together I've had some uh, some sort of tangling of the spring in there. I was only able to get three or four rounds in the magazine. So what I found is that if I loosen it ever so gently and then tighten it again you'll hear the, sp the spring twang in there and then I was able to get the full complement of rounds in there. And with that we got snap cap in the chamber. Let's see if the trigger is functioning correctly. We're on fire, pointing in a safe direction. We can see the studs poking out, not showing that it's cocked, so that's good. And the stud retracted, and we heard the click, so I think we're good to go. 
So let's get this thing unloaded and back in its home defense configuration. Elevator up, magazine release. Well, I don't want to say that was fun, but it was long overdue. If you guys liked what you saw, toss me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this nonsense, you're certainly invited to subscribe. And if you have a comment or a question, go ahead and make it below. Love to hear from you, and I've always got time to answer. I'm sure I've forgotten some stuff, but that's going to have to do for now. We'll see you again soon. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure there's nothing around in the chamber. So uh, let's check that out and make sure we're clear. Clean as a whistle. <laughs>